The three main functions of cabinet ministers are to direct government policies and making decisions about national issues, seeking for solutions to national problems and proposing laws that will galvanize development. The minister's platform articulates and projects these functions from diverse perspectives to keep Nigerians better informed. You're welcome. And moving on, on the Minister's platform, it's time to crisscross federal ministries, agencies and power subtles to bring you latest news reports on Ministry News. The Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Obunaya Ono, has said 2022 revised national energy policy and national energy master plan will impact the country's energy sector positively. The minister who stated this while speaking to journalists after the document was approved by the Federal Executive Council said the revised policy and master plan will enable Nigeria to take full advantage of available resources of energy in the country. NEP and NEMP were developed by the Energy Commission of Nigeria, ECN, which is a parastatal under the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. The Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, through his permanent secretary, Andrew David Adejo, has tendered an apology to the workers in the federal universities at a reconciliatory meeting brokered by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, noting that the ministry had not abandoned their issues but that circumstances had made it look as such. The apology came just as ASU charged the federal government to provide the required funding for the education sector and sign a decent agreement with the union. In response, the president of SANO challenged the minister and the government to exhibit sincerity and honesty to address the current impasse by implementing the agreement reached with the unions. The federal government has called the newly inaugurated board members of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria to complete over 200,000 housing units under the Ministerial Pilot Housing Scheme. The Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, who stated this when inaugurating the bank's board in Abuja, urged them to provide mortgage banking services to Nigerians and ensure compliance with the Central Bank of Nigeria regulatory obligations. The Minister of State for Works and Housing, Malam Muazu Sambo, says the Nigerian government has completed about 6,000 housing units across the country, funded by the Federal Housing Authority and the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. The minister who spoke with journalists in New York urged Nigerians, home and abroad, to buy the houses which he said are sold on the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing portal. According to him, 700 units out of the 6,000 units will be inaugurated in Zuba in May, adding that one of the priorities of President Muhammad Buhari's led administration is to provide social houses. The Minister of State for Works and Housing also noted that the government will deliver soon the second Niger Bridge and the 120 kilometers Lagos Ibadan Highway. The Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Animal Husbandry Services, in collaboration with the Oyo State Government, has commenced artificial insemination AI for cattle, sheep, and goats in the state in a bid to engender high production of livestock products, especially beef goat meat, mutton and dairy. This was disclosed by the Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development, Mr. Adini Olabode Adebisi, while presenting a motorcycle and artificial insemination kit donated to your state by the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development to an inseminator at a ceremony at the Ministry's conference room. While thanking the federal government for the gesture, he however assured the Ministry of more support and enabling environment for further mutually beneficial engagements. 
The Federal Ministry of Transportation has urged the Lagos Deep Offshore Logistics Base, LADO, to prioritize local content and youth development in furtherance of the federal government's policy on job creation. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Dr. Madeleine Ajani, made this known during an inspection tour of the Ladol Free Trade Zone in Lagos, which is one of the nation's critical infrastructures in the maritime oil and gas sectors. She further encouraged the company to continue to ensure that its policies and practices sufficiently affect the host communities in a positive manner in order to engender peace and inclusiveness. And finally, on Ministry News, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has shut down the swimming pool of the Mashud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, with immediate effect following the unfortunate death through drowning of a 13-year-old boy, Matthew Godwin, on Tuesday during the festive season. The ministry, which has ordered a full investigation to the matter, has sent delegates to pay the family of the deceased a condolence visit. The presidency was engaged with critical and crucial national matters this week. Let's keep you posted from the presidency. President Mohamed Buhari commissioned the King David University of Medical Sciences, Uburu, in Oazwara, local government area of Ebony State, on his two-day walking visit to the state. The president also commissioned the King David University twin flyover in front of the university and the Uburu MPU dualized concrete road. Governor David Umahi said the institution, which was constructed through direct labor, noted that the school has the capacity to produce dialysis, which is one of the most important components in dialysis. It was quite appreciative of the president's support for the project. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed his gratitude to the United Nations and some world leaders on their steadfast partnership in fighting terrorism. The President gave this commendation when he received the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the presidential villa Abuja on Wednesday. The world is with us and we confront extremist terrorist organizations, hunger and the enormous problems of dealing with millions of displaced people than this important visit. On his remarks, the UN scribe, who raised other fundamental issues, said that the United Nations had called for an additional $351 million as part of the overall $1.1 billion for the Humanitarian Response Plan for Nigeria. Despite all they have seen and endured, the people I met remain hopeful and committed to returning to their communities and resuming their lives. And finally, from the presidency, President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed deep condolences to the Nigerian army, the families of Audu Linus, a master warrant officer, and his partner Gloria Machu, a private who were brutally murdered by terrorists in Imo State University. The president, who condemned the barbarism of the perpetrators, described it as alien to all cultures and civilizations, directing the military authorities and other security agencies to do their utmost best in apprehending the perpetrators of the barbaric acts and bring them to justice. The deceased soldiers were beheaded after being shot by the terrorist groups, the indigenous people of Biafra IPOP on Saturday, as confirmed by the Nigerian army. <laughs> The business of preparing and establishing standards and certification of products
commodities across board is a major task of the Standard Organization of Nigeria. Is the agency living up to expectations of Nigerians? Let's find out from the Director General of the Standard Organization of Nigeria's Son on our Ministry, Agencies and Processes in Focus segment. You're still watching the Minister's Platform. Welcome to the Ministry, Agencies and Processes in Focus segment on the program. Today, we're beaming our searchlight on a very strategic agency under the Ministry of Trades and Investment, the Standard Organization of Nigeria, SAN. It's a pleasure to welcome Malam Farouk A. Salim the current Director General of the Standard Organization of Nigeria. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. What is the mandate, the vision and mission statement of the Standard Organization of Nigeria? Well, the mandate, the 2015 Act, which was a review of the 1971 Act that set the organization in motion. We are 50 years old now, actually. The review gave us a very wide range of activities to do. Almost everything you can think of under the sun has a standard. With the help of stakeholders, we create those standards and market them to individuals who need it. Part of our responsibility also goes with management system certification, which essentially we have this ISO, International Standard Organization, management systems. We have a training center in Kano, Abuja and Lagos that take care of those. We do the QMS programs, the ISO 27001, which is to do with um, IT systems. The 9001 is uh, for management system. Also, metrology, which is like measurements. So we do the ethical measurements. Essentially, the industries have machinery that they need to calib be calibrated individuals. So we kind of help them do the calibration. Um, we are not into the legal metrology, which is like the weights and measures purview where they can go to a you know, company like ShopRite and check their scales and see if they are working. But this, the machines they use to do that calibration, we, we calibrate it for them. So metrology is a big part of our responsibility. And we have a big metrological institute in uh, Enugu. And uh, it's almost done. We are building it. It's been built uh, for a while now. Also, uh, enforcement is part of our responsibility. Enforcement of standards making sure goods that are coming into the country or goods that are produced in this country are up to standard so that we can have safety of our people and also to make sure that substandard goods don't come into the country and destroy our local industry, causing unemployment and insecurity. We register products. So sometimes when you go into the market, you're buying an electronic that was imported. You will see a Sun logo sign in our lab here in Oba. We have about 35 labs in this uh, facility here. We're most uh, exclusively measuring different items here, where we sample the product, test it to make sure it's safe for the market, it's doing what it's supposed to do, and we do training. Since you came on board, sir, what are those very significant achievement. One of the biggest achievements we did was the MOU we signed with state governments around the country to help uh, small-scale, micro and small industries. We collaborate with the Ministry of Industries. They will get this small-scale industrialist, train them on how to package their product, how to standardize. If the, if the product they are doing doesn't have standards, we bring stakeholders together with them, create the standards, and then help them package it, market it. And uh, this is very helpful because at the end of the day, some of these products are going across the border. And if they are not packaged properly and they don't have certification from an organization like ours, it will be difficult for them to be accepted. Recently, we have the paint lab accreditation. We have the food accreditation. We have the electrical lab that was accredited. This is full accreditation by international accrediting firms, uh, some of them in uh, Europe, America, and even India. One of the achievements we have over the year, essentially, we made sure that our organization is more efficient. So we changed the structure. We introduced some more directorates 
for ease of doing business for the customer and to protect the, uh, the country essentially. So we create um, directorates in Anambra, Kano, Lagos, where these individuals are more or less small son in those areas. So they should be able to take cater to customer needs. Over the years too, we have done some training uh, for our employees. The 1,700 employees of Standard Organization of Nigeria, a uh, variety of uh, professionals. We have a range from food specialists to engineers to pharmacists like me and other fields. So essentially, because they are coming into a different organization where standards and metrology and training are done, essentially these people have to be trained continuously. We send them out to other countries where they go and train on lab accreditations. Technically, our employees are given the opportunity on a regular basis to go for training. The Standards Organization of Nigeria was in the forefront in not only setting the standards, but putting manufacturing uh, requirements for our sanitizers and masks. We are among the first in the world to set the standards for these PPEs, protective uh, equipments for people. Despite your efforts, uh, there's still cases of substandard products coming into the country and even produced here in Nigeria. So what are the proactive measures as this agency taking to forestall this dangerous trend? You have to understand substandard goods, production, importation, all rights on one item, profit. When there's a profit in something, generally people will try to gravitate towards doing it. So what we've done over the one and a half year I've been around is to make sure that we increase our factory inspections for the local productions. And I would like to let you know that most of our factories locally are doing an excellent job of uh, producing very good goods. The importation, what we did was we reached out to the markets in the country, the associations, try to sensitize them to discuss these issues because sometimes people import things just to make profit without looking at the consequences and they don't think they're making damages. So we have to sensitize the associations and the members that these products are destroying not only individuals and causing harm to them, but you know, something that is illegal. We are limited because 85% of the goods coming into this country are imported and they usually come through Lagos. And uh, currently, we don't have a physical presence at the ports. Unfortunately, standards cannot be scanned or looked over in a computer. And even in such a situation, we don't have access to the computers of the customs so that we can be able to look at it and see what is coming into the country. So we are reduced to occasional invitation to come into the ports and inspect goods that are suspicious. The rest of the work is done when the goods are already out. Most members of this organization, Standard Organization of Nigeria, are not trained security agents. So they are risking their lives on a regular basis on the street to look at containers and to unscrupulous elements sometimes attack these individuals. So we are at a very big risk. In fact, uh, even our enforcement is, is sometimes stammered by the ability for us to uh, protect ourselves. We went to the market like two months ago at uh, Abuja, uh, Apple Village, I mean Apple Market, and uh, the traders fired guns and sh attacked our people, break our vehicles. So we have to go back a couple of months later with more robust police, military, air force, and uh, DSS to go in there and do the enforcement. What is the level of data collection and management. We have a department, the you know, planning, research and statistics department that collects a lot of data. And we also recently just have a new department, which is the information technology uh, directorate. And um, we did that recognizing the fact that the industry right now, information technology is the heart of any organization. We have a robust uh, program that we are implementing. Our website is going through a, no, a big overhaul and um, very soon most of our activities can be actually, you know, our customers can request uh, in the comfort of their home most of the things without coming to our offices. What are those very serious challenges the agency is facing? One of the biggest challenges we have in the organization is the fact that we eat where we hunt. 
our services. If we come to your facility, we inspect it, we charge you a token fee. Somebody is manufacturing, we verify their product, we charge them a token fee. Those token fees add up, and that's what we use to make sure our individual employees will, will get a vehicle to take them to factory inspection, to take their tools with them, and to take the jobs. So unfortunately, it's not as much as the organization needs. You have to understand, an organization that has 45 offices in the country, we need at least to renew our vehicles every four or five years. Also, I have offices in the country where we are renting. It's not adequate enough. We need labs. Imagine something as simple as bottling water or bread. If you want to test it, you have to get the sample, bring it over to Lagos, and they will test it and tell you everything is okay. So one of the biggest challenges is the paucity of funds to take care of our logistics. On a final note, yes. what are the future projections of the agency? Our projection, honestly, is to make sure at every nook and cranny of the country, um, people know we exist, people know what we do for them. Right now, individuals will go to a market, buy something, and then they, they don't know that it's their right, it's a consumer right, if the product is not working, to take it back and get your money back, or take it to an organization like ours or FCPC where we can fight for your rights. We are building our capacity. Hopefully, we'll get enough funds very soon to build our labs around the country so every section of the country has ability to have access to labs where they can verify their products. Also, our offices will be more sophisticated where we can reach out to people and uh, educate them. And also, hopefully, but if we get to that level, we should be able to employ more people so that they can do an uh, excellent job to protect Nigerians and the industry. My word of assurance to Nigerians is our employees and our facilities are open and they are yours. In fact, Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, is, uh, I don't want to offend the ladies, but it's your son. So you reach out to us and we'll be there for you. Our big vision and mission is saving life through standards. I want to thank you, sir. Malam Farouk A. Salim for coming on uh, the Minister's Platform. Well, that's it on the Ministry, Agencies and Parcels in Focus segment on the Minister's Platform. The program will continue in a moment. We'll be right back. that there are no um, street laws that governs or guides tenants. I've been for like two years now and I have not seen one person ask me to pay one year. Yeah. Now, I like this city because of the, the opportunity, job opportunities. If they are able to decentralize the issue of power generation and transmission, I think we will be able to solve our power problem. They should decentralize the issue of power generation and transmission and allow people to generate and transmit. We will solve the problem. For federal government to make um, a difference now or for us to have a, a stable power supply, there is need for Nigerian government to diversify. Not just having uh, the Tama um, power stations as only source of uh, power supply in Nigeria. There is need for solar energy, there is need for wind energy, there is need for so many other alternative sources of power supply, you know, in doing so, that will guarantee um, constant power supply in the nation. If the federal government do that, they want to give everybody PP meter. I think that that one be better. So it be like network, MTN and uh, this uh, etc. something. Mm -hmm. So if they can do it like that, I think government will, will make their money. But the way they are making it that uh, they should discolor your lights and you go and pay. I don't think that so, some of the money is enter to another person's pocket. I think the new minister should at least study carefully what are the problems actually facing the power. If you should have other alternatives, I think there will be improvements. If the state government can generate their own power. It is your right and privilege to know the facts, figures and realities about the business of governance at the ministerial level. Don't miss out on the Minister's Platform next week. Thanks for watching.